Hello again everyone, this is Vincent and this is episode 10 of the Manufactoria walkthrough on Congregate. The next level I'll be doing is Ophanim, and this is the first level with over 100 parts. And similarly to the Seraphim level, we have a string of reds and blues with a green in the middle. And this is also a binary problem. So, what we do is, we have to read the string as the first set of reds and blues before the green is number A. And the second set of reds and blues before the after the green is number B. And we have to accept the string if A is greater than B. So just a bit of theory before I get into the solution. Suppose I had two binary numbers, 10111 and 11000. How do I tell which one is greater? So if I break these numbers down into their components, the first number is equal to 2 to the power of 4, plus 2 to the 2, plus 2 to the 1, plus 2 to the 0. The second number is equal to 2 to the 4, plus 2 to the 3. Now, 2 to the 3 is greater than 2 to the 2, plus 2 to the 1, plus 2 to the 0. So the second number is greater because if you t even though they both have 2 to the power of 4, so you can subtract the same number from both of them and the difference is still the same. But the second number has the 2 to the power of 3, which trumps the rest. So going back to the, num the number form instead of the expanded form, even though the first number has all these 1s coming after, has more 1s, like at the end of the number, the second number still, still is greater because its second 1 happens at a more significant place. It happens in the 2 to the power of 3 place, so it has a more significant 1 than the first number. So it doesn't matter what happens after the 2 to the power of 3 place because the second number has a 1 where the first number has a 0 and it's in the more significant place on the 2 to the power of 3 place. And when that happens, the second number has to be greater. The other case is, is if you have two strings of different lengths. Say I had 1, 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Even though the second number has more 1s and it has more 1s, it has three ones, and the first number only has one one. If you, line up, if you line up these numbers, the first number's one happens in the two to the power of three place again. So the first number is still has a more significant one than the, first, than the second numbers. So if you have a longer number, then you automatically have a one in a more significant place. You could put a placeholder zero in, the, in front of the second number and that would make them the same length and then you can see more easily that the first number is a more significant one. So I'm not sure if that helped you understand how you tell the greater of two binary numbers, but that's what I'm going to be working with. So first of all, I put a yellow at the end of my of my string. So now, reading from here, we have number A. So I'm going to rip off any reds that come at the beginning of number A until I see a blue. If I don't see a blue, what that tells me is that A is equal to zero. And if A is equal to 0, it can't be greater than anything else because B can't be negative. So we just reject it following the grey arrow down here because there's a there should be a green that we see in the middle of the string that we'll eventually get to if A is just 0. This, so otherwise, if I see a blue, I just copy the rest of number A until I see the green in the middle. When I follow the grey arrow, I put the green at the end instead. Then, I go to this conveyor branch where I'm reading number B. And again, I rip off the beginning reds of number B. Until I see a blue, whereupon I copy it and go up here because it sees a yellow and I rip it off, put it back at the end. Otherwise, if I, see, if I don't see a blue in number B, what that tells me is that number B is equal to zero. And because we know A is not equal to zero, we know that A has to be greater than B. We could theoretically then just route the gray arrow down here all the way to the exit. But that would, but that does increase the number of parts. So, what I do is to minimize the number of parts, even though it does increase the runtime of the solution, is I just put a single red in place of number B, because a single red is the same as n number of reds, it's still zero. So otherwise, I just copy the rest of number B until I hit my yellow, which I put at the end. I follow the gray arrow, I, put, I take it from the beginning and put it at the end. So what I have coming into this machinery is number A, followed by a green, followed by number B, followed by the yellow. Now, the yellow I'm now going to refer to as the comparison 
symbol because I can change that yellow to a green whenever I see the need. So just a general description of what my machine does is, before I get into the guts of it, I am going to be reading the last symbol from each dot. So say I had my example numbers again, 10111 and 11000. If I see that, if I see that the, I first compare the last digits of each number. They're, the first number has a 1, whereas the second number has a 0. So if, so if the rest of the number is equal, I'm going to assume that number A is that number A is greater than num that the first is greater than the second because there's a one where the where the second number has a zero. Then I remove both of the end dots. So now I'm reading the two to the power of one place. So this is a more significant place. I read it again. The first number is a one. The second number is a zero. Again, we think that num that the first is greater than the second, so, and I rip those off as well. Then I go to the third one, same sort of deal. First one is a one, second one is a zero. However, when I reach the the fourth part of the cycle, so the two to the power of three place, I see that the first number is a zero, where the second number has a one. So now I'm going to change my change my th thought and say that instead of a the first being greater than the second, the second is now greater than the first because everything that happened up to here is all less significant than this place. Now B, now the second is greater than the first. Then I rip those off and then see that they both have a 1 there. So we stick to the status quo and we say that the second is greater than the first. So that's kind of the concept of what I'm doing. So what I do, so how it works in the machine is first of all I go back to this cycle where I copy the, all of number A except for the last symbol where I check for the last symbol and then put the green at the end. And it could either be blue or red. Then I go into this cycle and it's just a slightly different structure but the same kind of deal. I copy the rest of number B until I reach the last symbol of number B. So I check and that could be red or blue. But then I also check the last symbol of num the the ca the cur the Sorry, the comparison symbol as well, because I can be changing from green to yellow as I see fit. The yellow means we're assuming that A is less than or equal to B, and the green means it's, we assume that A is greater than B. And there's several different paths you can take. So I'm just going to summarize the possible outcomes as possible outcomes in a table. So here, I have my three inputs, the end of the the end of the first string, the end of the second string, which were which are numbers A and B respectively being worked out from the from the least significant to most significant, so working from the end to the beginning. And then I also have the comparison dot. So for example, looking at the first row, if the first if the end of the first string is red and the se end of the second string is red, and the comparison dot is yellow, so we're assuming that A is less than or equal to B then we're going to stick to the status quo and say that we still think that A is less than or equal to B if it were to end right here, or if it were equal for the rest of it. And the two significant, two significant logical um, outcomes are if the end of number A, is, if the end of string 1 is red and the end of string 2 is blue and the comparison symbol is green, what that means is we now think is that the end of a the end of the end of the modified a is zero and the end of the modified b is one. So now we're going to think that b is greater than a because up because now in this digit place b is greater than a. So we turn the green we turn the green which is a comparison symbol which said that a is greater than b into a yellow which says a is less than or equal to because because now we've got evidence to suggest that a is less than a is less than or equal to b. The other one is if you have a a ends in a b, b ends in a r, and the comparison symbol is yellow. Um, that would be saying that a ends in a one, b ends in a zero, and we thought that a is less than or equal to b. Then we, what our outcome is, is that we change the yellow to a green because now we think that a is greater than b. And how, I, but I need to rearrange it a bit because geom, 
because in a in a spatial sense i need to arrange this kind of i need to arrange this this process because you have because this is our first output, the big end of number A. Our second output is here, the end of number B, or here. And these are our third outputs, the color of the comparison symbol. Now, if you, if I rearrange this, now looking at the table again, out of all the, out of all the sim, out of all the outputs where you have a, an, a uh, number A ending with a red or a red, for example. Out of those four, the the odd one out is the uh, is the one where a is one where a is r, a ends in an r, b ends in an r, and the and the comparison symbol is green. That's the only one where you see a green output or the carry symbol being copied as a green. The other ones are either copied as yellow or it's a changing a green to a yellow, and that's this one here. It's R followed by R followed by G, so it's this one. The rest of them are yellow. So what I do is I've arranged this so that these two, the R followed by B followed by yellow or R followed by R followed by yellow, both route to the same yellow, and R followed by B followed by G route to a yellow as well. And then I need to arrange this so that the green has to join back into this loop, and the yellow is joined to this loop without them interfering with each other. So what I've basically done is I compare the last two digits, and if I have evidence to suggest that one is greater than the that I need to change my decision, I change the yellow to the green or the green to the yellow. I do that, and then I rip off those last ones, and then I repeat the entire cycle. And remember that we're working from the least significant to the most significant digits. So we just need to we just need to change it depending on our current decision. So eventually. There are a few things that can happen. One of them is that they're both the same length, and you have either a green, yellow, or a green, green, going out, falling into the here. So what green, green means is that they're both the same length, and we've reached the decision that A is greater than B. So what happens is, if I was a grey arrow, you have a green, and then followed by another green where it goes back to here, and then there should be nothing else, so it follows the grey arrow down there. If you see a green yellow, what that means is that both string both A and B are the same length, and we've come to the decision that A is less than or equal to B. So what happens is you have a green there and then followed by a yellow. Another another thing you can have is it is if the first no is if the second string, so number B is longer the number A. What happens is you have a green followed by what's left of number B followed by the comparison symbol. So what happens is it follows a grey arrow, you see your first green, but then you see a red or a blue, which is what is left of number B. So it follows a grey arrow to the end of the, to the edge of the grid here. And, num and the other case you can have is if the first string is longer than if number A is longer than number B. What you have is number A just copied to the end, but then when you hit here, you just see the comparison symbol because we've run out of dots in number B. And the comparison symbol is either green or yellow. So what happens is it follows a grey out of here or out of here, and then it just goes straight to the end. Because if the first num number A is longer than B, then A is, has to be long has to be greater than greater than B. I think I covered most of the situations, so this one we would... No, I didn't save the input, but I think we accept it. So now I'm just copying them, so now... That's our first number, and that's our second number with the green and the yellow respectively, with any reds that happen to be pulled off. Then we go into the copy... Until we see that red-green. And then I compare it to the last dot. And I'm just going through the cycle until I hit my yellow. So I've just ripped off both of both ends. And now I go into this next loop. Now this is the final cycle. And now we've got our green green which we accept. This one we reject.
second copy. So now I've got a green yellow coming in, which gets rejected out here. Alright, that was a really, really complicated level, and the next one is pretty pretty much as complicated, so I think I'll just spend one i I'll spend I've spent one episode just on the offenim level and I'll spend one episode on the next level. So I will see you in the next episode with the level Metatron.